How's it going guys? Alex here from Overland and Essentials. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're just going to have a little bit of a talk about um, chassis maintenance and that's because I've actually spent last week uh, maintaining and looking after the chassis of my Defender. Now the reason I'm doing that, we, you know, we're coming up to winter or well summer in uh, of the other half of us but it's just to kind of, I mean, a Land Rover's Achilles heel is it literally rots inside out. And I mean, it's it's pretty unavoidable. I mean, you can paint the chassis as much as you want, but it's, it's still gonna happen at some point. But, you know, there's no point in speeding that up. So what I like to do is, I haven't done it on this vehicle before, as you know, I've only had it for about a year. So I've just literally had a look through the chassis and any things that are kind of bolted to the chassis. So uh, let's, So first off with the chassis, I went through, checked everything through, see if there's any welding that I need to do. And I was pretty lucky, still okay. Um, got my angle grinder with a sanding disc and just took off any scabs under there or any bits that look a bit sort of rough. Just knock all that off, knock it back to the metal and then prime it. Um, we used like a, a zinc, zinc oxide, I think it was. And, and then we gave it a coat of uh, like a black uh, metal paint, which uh, the guy in the shop told me was gonna be great for a chassis too. So gave that a go. And I think it was actually called rust converter, which sounds pretty convenient to me. But anyway, so that's what we used. Um, now, while I was under there, I checked my fuel lines. The fuel lines run across the top of the chassis. You wanna check all those fixings are still holding the fuel lines to the chassis. And then of course, your brake lines, they run uh, down chassis too. So you just wanna check those. Um, make sure there's no rust on them and everything's still in place as it should be and while you're there uh, you could because basically on a on a defender your your fuel filters underneath the rear arch they're bolted to the side of the chassis now I was pretty lucky that I did go and look under there I mean it's pretty hard to miss anyway to be fair but the cover had actually been smashed off of the front of the, so the filters exposed now and, and it's housing uh, it's it's uh, the actual uh, the, the fuel, fuel filter holder on top with the lines so lucky as in i then noticed that one of the brake lines was actually weeping which i haven't noticed before and i probably wouldn't have noticed it because it as it, run, it weeps runs down the hose which then takes it behind the chassis so i've checked that basically just the jubilee clip sorted it out chopped off the hose a bit moved it up fine so they're all things that you could check while you're down there now as you're laying underneath it and i was laying underneath it for i think it was three or four days in the end uh, of, of sanding and, and prepping, priming and painting. It's quite a bit of work involved if you want to do it properly. And you do want to do it properly. You do it once, you do it properly, it's gonna, you know, you get a much better result. The inside of the chassis is all really nice. I've coated up as high as I can get and get the brush on top of there. I did it all with a brush. Um, yeah, I think it's, you know, it's good to get the gun under there and just go away, but I didn't really want it all over the engine and other components. I just wanted the paint where I wanted it, which was just on the chassis and some of the fixings. Now, while I was there, I did check underneath uh, my, I did grease nipples uh, on my UJs and uh, up at the suspension at the front. You know, do while you're laying under there, you might as well check that. You can check your your prop shaft UJs as well while you're there. You know, just have a quick look at any any other bits and pieces that you might be able to, uh, problems that you could probably tackle at a later stage. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically what I've been up to. And you know, you really want to get on top of that with a Defender. And I reckon with any vehicle because they, like I said, they rust it inside out, and the coating that they come out of the, sh of the factory with that on the, the outside of the chassis is just is pretty much, you know, it's not a very good coating uh, as, as what I would like to see on a chassis. Like I mentioned before, I had a Hilux, and uh, the Hilux at one point we was bashing the side of the chassis with this uh, sort of. Um, club hammer there don't ask why and it didn't even crack the paint uh, so that was a pretty heavy coating on there um, but still I, I did go ahead and take care of that I mean simple things like before you're going to go out get your can of WD-40 and you coat the chassis all that you know all under your wheel arches um, the engine bay um, all those sort of places you want to coat it with uh, WD-40 that makes it easy to clean when you come back uh, once it's got all that mud and clay and stuff stuck in there, it will make it easier to clean. But also, any nuts and bolts that need to be undone or done up is going to be still uh, easy to do, uh, easy to um, tackle. And on top of that, you're kind of giving the chassis a little bit of extra protection, um, just having this sort of moist oil um, on the chassis and un under the places you can't get to. So that's definite top tip there, and we always do that. And I, you know, all of the guys that, are, that I know that are into it are all doing the same thing probably more to do with the fact that it look, makes the chassis look like it's rolled out of the factory and it was easy to clean 
So, uh, so yeah, that, that's that's something which you could uh, you, you could always have a go at. Uh, what else I did do while I was there, I um, actually built some rock sliders, and as you can see there, they're looking pretty smart. They're proper. Uh, kind of a chunky look like they're off a road train really um, but they are they're three mil is it three or four mil could be uh, um, steel and i just uh closed off the the end caps and now it's it's made it a step which it's you know it's about two inches under the vehicle cool and probably about four inches out so it's quite a wide uh step there. and basically all that's done is i i went over some uh, a log and uh, the defender comes with just a piece of uh, aluminium there and as it came down it bent up this uh, this little bit of aluminium i had there which then made it that the door wouldn't open because it had pushed it up not very good not ideal and of course if you saw in my video of the walk around land rover you'll see that i had my brush bar coming down and then going to the chassis which it, it wasn't giving it the strength that i'd like it to have so what i've done is i've run that down welded that to the uh to the rock slider which has stiffened that right up made that real nice um sort of solid gave this us welded this directly to the chassis two two pillars going to the chassis and then i connected it at each end and and it's it's real real solid made it feel really solid like uh you know i don't know that, that kind of piece of mine are does it feel a bit a bit more stiffer when i'm cornering because the chassis seems to be a bit stiffer but i don't know maybe so i did those and the thing the, probably the most significant thing that i noticed was my chassis is good everything seemed to be relatively okay but the uh fuel tank guard was rotten as a pear and i mean hold through i just bashed it with it it looked okay and then I, I pulled a bit of the side and it broke off so i bashed the screwdriver and then it just went straight through luckily not into the fuel tank <laughs> so i ended up couldn't get the bolts out uh, for the um, anti-roll bar or to drop the mount or, uh, the, to drop the uh, the plate down. So I ended up having to lift the floor up in the back, bring the fuel tank out that way, and then cut the bolts, cut all the bolts to hold the, the guard on and the anti-roll bar. So yeah, what I did was then I went ahead and put a one point, uh, sorry, a three mil uh, galvanized sheet metal tank guard, which is the same shape as the original and at the end it's got like a u-bend as the original did but i mean with a three mil uh, sheet metal with that bend in it just makes it super solid i mean it's you'd be pretty hard to punch a hole in that push the fuel tank through the floor before it punched the hole in it so that was probably one of the major modifications that had to be done so yeah so that's about it uh, for the, this video it was just a really just a maintenance just a heads up what you should be doing to your uh, to maintain your vehicle it's not all about what's on top um, it's also about the underside it, you know it needs as much taken care of uh, as the top does and especially on the Land Rover's head it's Achilles heel so thanks for watching the video um, please like and subscribe uh, don't forget to hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos coming up um, makes it so much easier you know I, I subscribe to a lot of channels um, I just go into my YouTube there I hit that subscribe button I get a list of all my new videos come up so much easier for me to see who's posting what on, on the stuff that I actually want to see so uh, so don't forget to do that and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video cheers